What's done guys? So today we're actually going to be talking about wrist twists and what the day is is basically you know you're twisting or rotating an armature on its wrist like this and you're going to notice that happens. You can see it in the rendered view it's basically twisting the wrist which is why it's called the wrist twist problem. Now I can solve this problem a little bit if I adjust the elbow ever so slightly like this but what this actually causes is a dysfunctional elbow as you can see it's moving in the completely opposite direction right there and we don't want that there so what I actually was looking into is I made a new model and it's nothing fancy it's just to test out the wrist twist and how we can actually solve this problem. So it's set up basically like a normal armature and here we have our lower arm which is constrained by an IK and its target is the hand IK which is this bone and then it also has a pole target which is the elbow which is the bone in the back right there and this actually was able to work pretty darn good if you can actually see the rendered out view this is a hand that has been rotated and twisted on that wrist and it's now facing upwards when it would normally face downwards like this as you can see so what I've actually done is aside from this lower arm bone if we go into edit mode right there I've created three more bones and now I've seen a lot of tutorials say that we should actually use segments I've tried segments it didn't actually work out so well. So what we do here is we use three more bones. Now these three bones are all parented to this lower arm bone. So if I go into the bone properties over here, you can see that its parent is this LA controller. This is the LA controller. So LA controller, LA controller on this one here as well. These three bones deform the mesh while this one here does not deform the mesh. And of course this one's parent is going to be the upper arm bone. Also another thing guys, as you can see, all of their roles are set on the global Z axis. So the Z is always pointing up, the Y is pointing to your right. And this is from the front view. And of course guys, we are working in orthographic view. I don't know how people could work in perspective view. Now, what have I done here? It's like a normal rig. There's our hand, there's our hand IK. There's our lower arm, there's our upper arm. But what's different again is that there's these three new bones. And this doesn't actually change much. Let's go into pose mode and I'll show you what I've done. So we're going to go into pose mode down there. Let's just press Z to go into wireframe mode. And you'll see that I've applied a rotation constraint. So it's a bone constraint, it's called copy rotation. There it is right there. So your armature is going to be your target your bone is going to be your hand IK, which is this bone right here. And this is going to be applied on all three of them. Another setting that I've actually done is I've deselected the X, I've deselected the Z, and I have selected the Y. Another thing that I uh, changed was that all of them were in world space. I changed that to local space, local space. So for the bone closest to the hand, the influence is going to be 0.9. The second bone is going to be 0 0.6 and the third bone is going to be 0 0.3. Um, I'm not sure if any other ones would work. I just found that this was the quickest way that worked for me. And when I was waiting in weight paint each of these bones, remember that this bone has no deformation properties. It does not deform the mesh in any way. Let's put this in our top view so we can actually get a hold of that. So the way I deform, I weighted this mesh rather for our upper arm as you can see at the joint it's losing a lot of that weight so this is actually weighted at 1 where it's red and this is actually going to be weighted at 0 0.5 so let's go into edit mode let's turn off wireframe mode and you'll see it's at the joint so there's a, an edge cut an edge loop at the joint almost at the joint of each bone. So you can see there's one here at the joint of this bone, there's one here at the joint of that bone, and there's also another one here at the joint of this bone. And at these joints, 
when you come to your vertex groups, these are going to be set to a 0 0.5. The rest of it is going to be set at 1. So you'll notice the same on every other bone as well. So for this bone, you can see at that joint, it's 0 0.5. And then at the side of the joint, it's also 0 0.5. In the center, it's been set to 1. Same thing goes for this bone, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. In the center, it's set to 1. Same for this bone, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. In the center, it's set to 1. And same for this bone. It's set to 1 over here. And at the joint, it's set to 0 0.5. And this actually works pretty darn well. If I rotate this bone now, and you can see it's almost completely rotated. And if I actually, let's go back into pose mode so I can play along with it a bit more. Let's take it out of wireframe mode. And if you look at this, it's actually pointing to the direction of the elbow. And what's nice is if I go into side view on the right side, I can adjust this elbow and it adjusts the mesh accordingly and there's almost no deformation that looks bad as you can see down there. Lastly guys, what I actually did was, let's touch this right here. So this is the mesh that I've selected now and if we go to our mesh modifiers, I didn't actually know this and it's actually a beginner tip which I totally missed out because I'm a hasty person. Basically, what I actually forgot to do was click this little box down here. I clicked this little box down here called Bone Envelops for Fun because it didn't seem to do much. As you can see, nothing's really happening, so I just clicked it on for fun. But this is the main one. This is what's important. Preserve Volume. So we want to have that selected. And you can actually see the difference in the mesh when you click Preserve Volume. You can see it's much smoother now there. This looks like every bone is individual and now it's much, much smoother. So yeah guys, if you like that video, be sure to leave a like, maybe subscribe if you like and share it with your friends because I've seen this problem a lot of places and the solution to this problem, which is really simple as I've just shown you, is really hard to come by and a lot of, of the Stack Overflow pages and all of the tutorial pages are mostly tutorials in writing, which I find is really hard to follow. So hopefully this video helps you out. So yeah, enjoy.